The presence is so radically different, it's really difficult to describe. Gaia had said embodiment was going to change everything. She said that four years ago, and look where we are now. We're like, wow, it is a different state of consciousness. So, our star legacy comes into play, and we're not talking about uh, star beings or star family. We're talking about an aspect of consciousness that permeates the logos, the universal logos. So, on to our star trajectory. Gaia is becoming a spiritual sun. It's, down, it's way down the timeline. We don't have to worry about her bursting into, you know, but that's the trajectory was, and, and her intention, when you connect with her, she's like, and it's been revealed to so many people too, very widespread, I saw Gaia becoming a star down the timeline. So, we apply a little logic, a little wisdom. We go, okay, so if this trajectory is to become a spiritual sun, long-term an actual star, then all of her life has to reflect and be able to not just embody, but become an aspect of that star presence. Does that make sense? Yeah, do you feel that? So this star presence that's stepping in now is, uh, it radi Gaia's radiating new light, more light. We're no longer primarily influenced by the cosmic rays and the plasma and the CMEs and the solar flares that are coming at us. There's a conversation happening. Right, so the flare comes in, the energy comes in, the influxes happen, and Gaia answers right back, and you feel the radiation, right? You feel the emanation. It's telling the master crystals, the water, the crystalline core, everything to do something new, and then Gaia informs, because she's been reconnected with her planetary brothers and sisters, with the galactic center, with the universe, everything. She's been reconnected since 2011 when she made the decision to divide realms, right? So we can walk through this together. But she's slowly revealing this star consciousness. Now in the higher realms, this is already created. That's why you have an ascension trajectory at all is because the outcome exists in the future, right? That's how timelines are created. You can't just go willy-nilly into, I want to do this, I want to do that. Well, is it, if unity consciousness is end game, is the, the final step going, I mean, there's never really a final step in anything, but when we talk about the ascension process of all of us transforming ourselves, transforming the planet, transforming the way that we reconnect, the, that trajectory was the highest, strongest outcome chosen by everyone. You know, it all changed in 1987, right, with the harmonic convergence. A decision was made. That trajectory shall be the primary ascension timeline. And here we are, Awning, on it, living it, and experiencing it. But if you hold that in your heart, you can see that the light-based divine human, our collective trajectory, must hold this presence, must hold this starlight vibration, solar, cosmic Christ, right? It's all like encoded into all of our logo stories. Our bodies change, they adapt to the light level, Crystal kids come in, diamond kids come in, holding the undistorted templates in their DNA and in their consciousness. You can see, like, not just the evolution, but the, the um, consistent upgrades that we're going through. Kingdoms ascending, elementals ascending, all of it is based on this transformation into the star consciousness. So if you can unify and feel like a star consciousness, an actual star, say like Solaris, whom I connect with all the time. And when I talk about the solar beings or the solar presence, it's not 
individual beings with form. It's a collective consciousness that have ascended and decided to serve as a star, as a generator of a you know, be part of the organic stargate system because there's intention, right? For Venus to do something long ago, for Gaia to do something new, you know, all of these different intentions for the planetary neighborhood, right? The star, Solaris, holds that intention so strongly and is in such divine service, unwavering service, no matter what happens, that trajectory shall be. If you can tap into the power and strength and resolve of that level of star presence, you'll have a much easier time of changing your service, of being in service, of walking through this passage with ease and grace because the energies change quite dramatically over the next couple of years. They, they're already changing quite dramatically this year, I would say. So this light-based divine human that we're transforming into can hold, right, can hold that transformation of star consciousness. So let's touch on ascension and the logos. So the Logos, Star Logos, the reason why it's called Solar Cosmic Christ, if you kind of pull that apart and look at it, Trinitized beingness, you know, it has a lot of different names, Christ consciousness, crystalline consciousness, unity consciousness, they all mean the same thing. They're all referring to not just a template, but a, a state of consciousness, a frequency blend, a harmonic that holds this logos together. Star ancients created this path. And this is something that I, I've been tapping to, into a lot with my um, Essianic realms, the Essenes, so connected to star beings and, and the guidance of star consciousness. And it's, it provides a path out of separation. So when the ancients set this trajectory in motion, which is something that we're always doing, right? With our grid work and our gate work. Okay, if, if we want this desired outcome, what are the steps to get us there? Where are we? Where we can't even like drag people into that reality any longer? Right? We're very sovereign, we're very just empowering. John always says, empower those who can. Right? It's the empowerment of walking people into uh, the freedom from the illusion, out of density, and we may express as this star presence, as these star beings, as we go through the steps of ascension. And the, the guides, angelics, archangelics, star family, masters that came before us are us, of course, in unity consciousness, but they could see the trajectory, so they lay out ways for us to embrace this universal, multiversal, harmonic awareness of everything that's going on, stop being so Gaia-centric, stop being so, you know, you and your own world, all of a sudden, all of that goes away. You can still have a personal experience, but it loses its density. It loses its importance as we go on to being in service as unity consciousness. Now, this Christ Logos creates luminosity and vivific vivification uh, within our cells in the DNA, you'll feel it. You could feel it even when you're outside underneath the stars at night. It's no longer like a wistful sense of mystery or awe. All of a sudden, I am that, right? It, you feel that connection. You feel that star presence coming in. That pure life force, we were talking about mother plasma, has that. That pure life force um, gives you that, that sensation, I always, you know, I talk to my friends and I'm like, I feel more awake than I've ever been in my life. Just like, like the perspective is so wide and so broad and your eyes are open and it doesn't matter if you're like 
wired and tired or weepy and sleepy or whatever, you know, symptom side effects that you're going through, you feel energized. And it doesn't have to be like, oh, I've got a lot of energy. You know, it's, it's a different sensation. It's like your soul is getting rejuvenated. It's a powerful life-giving force for the whole beingness. Again, we're referring to the logos, this energy, this presence that returns to us because we've done all the structure work, you've set up the crystalline DNA, you've opened the heart, you've gone into unity consciousness, so you create the conditions so that something new can occur. The stargate flows, these rivers of light, the cosmic organic stargates, the solar flashing activity, the celestial bodies, and we really need to feel into how the illusion of density is really disappearing from our consciousness. Atoms and, I mean, just think about your own body. Atoms and molecules never touch. They are surrounded by space. There's actually no, you know, there, there, this is an illusion, right? So you're actually, you know, we always say we're stardust, but when you think about like the actual structure, it's a whole bunch of space space and water and star energy and presence, you know. That's the thing that we use to create this and then we get to move on to the new creation, which is what the, uh, this convergence is all about, is moving into this new state of presence, adding the water and pl plasma intelligence as a new way of communicating and then adding the star presence as a way to really open up to the beingness that is free, right? Freedom from illusion. And that's quite beautiful. A crystalline photonic plasma that shapes the now and future outcomes to produce our ascension experience is involved in this return of the Logos, return of the Christ. We've heard it a million times at this point, right? But the, the energy that's coming through, just, just the fact that we have so much crystalline DNA activated in the collective right now, you could throw away all your worries about DNA, honestly. It's gonna override and overwrite everything. So in this purity and divinity of this photonic plasma that now has a way to get into our body, our consciousness, and deliver more information has to do with this star trajectory. I don't know if you could feel that, but it, it's like all part of the steps. And then you've got the core magnetic shift that's happening within Gaia. It's not the magnetosphere, it's Gaia is actually changing the magnetics within her crystalline core within the master crystals that are around the crystalline core to not just drop the veils, that's happening on the surface, remember all the different layers. So at the crystalline core, she's actually creating a different magnetic, a different magnetic field, if you wanna call it that, if you wanna call it you know, the crystalline field, the Christ field, it's actually based on magnetics. So when the magnetics change, because the right amount of information is coming in, Gaia makes the decision, okay, we need to shift. That's where you get that expansive sensation, where it's your heart, your consciousness, your fields, you'll, you'll feel it. And it's not, again, it's not just coming from up there, out there. It's coming, radiating right through the planet. So Gaia, by making those steps, is not just revealing her trajectory, because a lot of scientists lately have been like, where is this going? You know, I'm like, why don't you just read some channels? I don't know. <laughs> We've been talking about it for, for decades. Like, come on, guys, keep up. So uh, there's that. But it's this template across the universe, the logos, for Christ consciousness, for the ability to hold that, in a light-based, plasma-based form. And it ends up changing, not just Gaia as a spiritual sun, but it ends up changing our 
heart centers. We're going to talk about heart recalibration too tomorrow, but uh, it's actually changing us from the inside out. So this solar cosmic Christed heart, the Logos, starts behaving like a star. All of a sudden you're in pure service. You're open, you're flowing, and you'll feel it, not just you know, the initial flows, but the energy coming out of our fields, but especially the heart right now have taken, it's taken me aback. I'm like, oh my gosh, I was blessing the convergence crystals after their travels and their frequency bath, and I was like, wow, the energy flowing out of my heart and out of my hands right now surprised even me and I do energy work all the time. You know, it's just like there's something else happening, right? The water, the crystals, the relationship, it's all changing. It's beautiful, but you feel your heart center changing too so that it can refract light in a different way. We'll talk about that trajectory too. Let's talk about the stars in service that... Uh, and again, I want to shift your perspective if you've thought of stars as like big fiery balls or consciousness that are doing things or they're all just stargates connected, flowing new light or whatever. There's a presence there that um, is like highest orders of light level, unwavering divine service regardless of what happens. And it, it feels the highest trajectory. So there's a consistency there. Like if you work with the organic stargates in service to the organic ascension, you know, I'm always like qualifying, like we're working with the organic stargates that are in service to the organic ascension. And when you connect with that level of presence, they're no longer stars. There's a beingness there. And not like, the solar people, you know, it's, it's a different level of consciousness that, that, have, that are expressing pure unity consciousness in that way, in service. I'm going to be that open channel, I'm going to be that open conduit to flow this light, to change things, and I will do everything, you know, in service. It's quite beautiful. So we have our constellations and stars, this network of the universal ascension. Again, don't view them as individual stars, but as collective beings in service, and you'll have a much easier time of uh, really feeling this. And they're guided by this network of stargates. So they don't operate alone, much like in unity consciousness. You don't go off and do something on your own. Oh, this would be cool, you know, whatever, without considering the whole ever in unity consciousness. So they are very much in service. You have these source stargates, pure emanation with an ascension focus, infinite intent. There's no contraction whatsoever. It's all expansion. It's all let there be light level, right? Expansion, infinite creation. Uh, Paradise Sun, the Paradise Sun, if you've ever connected with it, which is, uh, you know, Yeshua mentioned it, tonight you will be with me in Paradise. You know, he was actually a Paradise Sun from the Paradise Sun, that emanation of the par Paradise Sun. So when, uh, whenever I invoke Divine Cosmic Mother, Heavenly Father, Paradise Sun, right, it's this pure integration of those forces that creates a trinity, that creates the logos, so it's like the source of that. So when we talk about a source gate, it's there's nothing before it, Gr you know, grand central sun level, pure source intent, blasting into all of these realms, multiverse level. That would be considered a source stargate. Then you get star beings that are holding the stars in service, Ancients of days, the highest orders of light, expressing as that cosmic Christ logos. Sometimes they incarnate in order to assist the ascension trajectory. So, masters, Yeshua, Mary, you know, uh, folks like that, Germain, uh, and many other star beings that you will never read about in any textbook. 
there's a decision made at that star level. Okay, we need to elevate and assist, so what are we going to do? We're going to actually have a star presence incarnate into a body in order to move the needle on the ascension trajectory. You know, humanity loves to do the same thing over and over again. <laughs> and every once in a while, they're like, you guys aren't doing much, let's move the needle. Come on, you know, kind of move it along. Or we're ready, right? We're ready for that kind of thing. I feel we're going to see a lot more of these beings uh, incarnating, or uh, not just visitation, but actually, you know, stepping through and expressing in a very no guru, no master kind of way. I think they're just going to slip in and out of the, of the realms and visit, hold their energy, plant seeds of consciousness and move on, uh, which is beautiful. But you can see how the, the star beingness, that star presence, incarnating into a form, it takes a lot of energy and it really does number on the body. So that's why you had all those practices back in the day in the mystery school. Prepare yourself because when you really embody this thing, it's, it might kill you. I mean, a lot of people died in the mystery schools. You remember that? Just like, you know, people were like, I'm ready. Like, okay. <laughs> you know? And you call it in. You see that even with sisters and brothers, you know, they're just like too many mantras, too many practices, and then they're spun out, right? Like the consciousness can't handle it, and it just, it either kills the form or you go a little cray-cray, right? So that's the star beings helping out. And then we have these gateways to resolve and transmute separation. Just to be aware of, some Stargate networks are focused, their purpose, their service, is to remove the cause of distortion. And just, just waiting for a yes, yeah, okay. Um, the cause of distortion has already been resolved in the higher realms. So if you have stories about star systems or what happened on, on that star or what happened over there or the distortion started over here or then it went to there and it spread like a cancer over there, that's all gone, right? That's just part, now it's just part of the human history history, right? It's just like, oh, yeah. And I, I just want to note that the beings, I shared this with a sister, hi, Tamara, <laughs> just, just last week, and uh, I was like, this is really interesting to me, because I was always trying to understand why uh, those who wanted to further control and wanted to limit the ascension were doing what they were doing. Like I just couldn't, I don't know, in my state of consciousness, I'm like, but don't you see how it's gonna fail? You know, because ascension is inevitable and it, you're not gonna be able to stop it. And I was like, why, you know, why are they trying so hard? And there's all these stories that they're being controlled by other realms, which is completely false at this stage in the journey. That has all been resolved and dissolved. The trouble <laughs> that we have right now is with the, the kind of looping, trying to control and everything. They're actually terrified of non-existence. That kind of hit something for me. I was like, oh, the reason why they don't want ascension is because they don't know what's on the other side of the veil. They've consistently, through all these different star systems, bouncing around and creating turmoil and more separation or whatever is because they, they cannot embrace transmuting out of form into something else, into that level of freedom and grace and love and light and everything. I, was, I felt very um, compassionate when I, uh, when I heard that because I was like, oh wow, they just don't trust, right? They don't trust that you can change. And I feel too, like, I think we're going to show what's possible with humanity, like I always say in every light letter, let us show humanity what's possible with ascension, because it will show them the possibilities that are available to 
expand, right? No more contraction, no more control, but this ability to expand, which is a very celestial, stellar star presence when you're carrying that pure source energy that says infinite creation, explore all possibilities, right? So some of the gateways have been specifically centered on transmuting the density out of our fields and flotsam that may be in other systems, but those conflicts are, are no longer happening. It's all been resolved. So here we are on Gaia going, okay, let's move on, right? <laughs> And Gaia, too, is complete with density. I know it was hard to hear back in 2011 when I was delivering messages like 3D no longer exists. Technically, it's already gone. You're just looping on a memory and people are telling you to keep creating the same thing over and over again, right? Here we are in the realm shift and Gaia is like, I'm done. I don't even exist in that level of consciousness any longer. The density is going to be blown apart and the new realms will be revealed. So you get this realm division phase that we're all in right now. But Gaia herself, as an evolving star, right? She is complete with providing a platform for duality, for density. She's dropped that. There's no longer, and because she's dropped it, there's no longer energetic support for that kind of behavior, which is why everything's getting like flung out into the field right now in this desperate attempt to try. We're like, oh, honey, you know? And it's like you just smile and send love and uh, amplify the positive as much as possible because that is our solution to letting density break apart, but Gaia herself is complete. She's out of the cycles, right? No more Kali Yuga, no more cycles, we're done. And, uh, and it does create balance. Here we are at Equinox talking about balance. The Christ field, crystalline field, the Christ field, not the crystalline grids. The Christ field holds this source signature. It's a literal field of pure vibration infused with the integrated Christ-like intelligence that doesn't operate from duality any longer, right? When we talk about the trinitized beingness, uh, the Christ field is bringing in this new star energy. So it's holding this source signature and it's self-correcting Again, focusing on the star presence, the Christ field. When you start feeling your own field change, you will notice when your I am presence, DNA, and heart are unified. You will notice things just get fixed. It just happens. And I personally have had the experience of and like lower old self going, oh, this person's gonna say that, it's probably gonna be a problem, or oh, I should fix that, it's probably gonna be a problem, or whatever, like, which is like way back here, lower self trying to add to the conversation, right? And it's always flipped. It always turns out better. So you start to notice like your own Christ field is auto-correcting. Now the entire planetary consciousness is now surrounded by this Christ crystalline field and it's interacting with the crystalline grid, the crystalline grid not stationary, now it's flowing, right? It's com completely responsive, it's got that plasma energy, right? Completely responsive, the energy flows where it needs to. It's not, it used to look like a big, uh, you know, hexagon shaped grid around the planet hasn't looked that way in years, now it's flowing, it's got more of that mother plasma energy, but the Christ field is now not just amplifying, but it's changing our own fields, right? Core magnetic, changes your heart, changes the field. You'll find that it has, uh, the Christ field has this miraculous effect on the realms, on the collective, on the self. This is why the legend of Christ as savior, that's where this comes from. Because the 
sensation and the freedom from density and the freedom from illusion comes through the Christ, not a person, it's a state of beingness, a universal state of beingness, a universal star logos, right? That says, so it is, it's a very grand, so it is. But when I first started experiencing the presence reunification, I was like, well, that's it, that's why. That's why they always said, you know, the Christ will save you. I grew up Catholic. So it, I was like, oh, all right, because the higher realm, you know, the higher consciousness expression of that solar cosmic Christ, the energy, the consciousness that gets you out back out of separation, back into unity, it really does feel like it's saving your life, right? Saving your soul because it's, and it's you, right, that's doing it. But that's where the connotation comes from. You know, all those ancient texts are all encoded for things that they thought we couldn't uh, grok back in the day. And here we are in these higher states of consciousness going, I understand completely what that is. I understand that it, uh, my DNA changes and then my entire presence can express through my body in a different way. I understand that that Christ energy comes in and it changes my entire experience and my perspective and my way of walking in these realms, yeah? It changes how we create and assemble our realities. I love that they say how we assemble our realities because in unified co-creation, it, it's a team effort. Right, so it's like, oh, if we want to, uh, together, vibration of unity consciousness only supports those in unity. So then you kind of assemble your reality and it's less rigid and dense. It's not like building with a brick and mortar thing anymore. It's a flexible, pri pliable reciprocity that happens. It also responds to proper use of life force. The Christ field is infused with that, and you've heard me describe divine perfection as uh, the ability, right, to use proper use of life force. So it's infused with this divine perfection, and naturally it behaves like photonic light, right? It's all about order, creating order, and it comes in and it scrambles everything sorts out who's in what vibration, right? And then it allows you to uh, express divine perfection if you so choose. It's very celestial though, very celestial kind of energy. So let's just talk about the process of star presence, how we are being transformed. So you have this organic star intelligence, new light, water, harmonics, unity consciousness itself, all in the game of transforming our beingness. You have the sun that has gone through yet another prism shift. Remember the sun being used as a prism? You project through the sun into these realms, that's how your soul uses DNA, right, to project into these realms but the sun is like that movie projector. So it's changed the reel many times of how these realities are being projected because of the light level. So now we have this opportunity, Solaris changed again this year, right? Leveled up again this year, it reflects those higher changes because it's not just us, it's the entire universal harmonic that's changing. The heliosphere changed, the magnetic field on the sun changed. And as our lo when our local star has a jump in frequency, it has a very strong impact on what Gaia is doing, what our hearts are doing. New plasma, same thing happening within us, right? A divine sacred mirror, remember? The divine mirror. So Solaris is up-leveling pretty consistently now. So you're, you're feeling frequencies that are not reflected on a solar flare chart or on a magnetosphere geomagnetic storm chart, right? It's stuff that hasn't, well, nobody's figured out how to measure that yet or they're just not paying attention or don't want to explore that. I'm not sure what's going on there. But uh, as the sun literally 
changes the way it projects light, your soul over soul, that's using the sun as a way to project into these realities, you can see, okay, that's how I can change how I walk in these realms, my beingness, my consciousness, now my I am presence can come through and do the good work. It's really lovely. The heart gets recalibrated. I spoke a little bit about this earlier. So we can refract light in a new way. And they showed me a rose window from Notre Dame. And if you've ever seen that, the, the way that that window was designed, it looks like the light is coming from everywhere. Even if the sun is like direct, you don't get beams, right? It actually, the, the glasswork actually refracts light to look like it's emanating from everywhere. And they showed me that. They're like, this is what your heart is going to go through, is this recalibration so that you refract pure light and new wavelengths, new frequencies, and new harmonics in a brand new way. And you can feel it when you're working with light or your own heart. There's a, an emanation there. Clarity, freedom, holding the I am presence, shifting this heart shift, to shift the vessel, to shift your experience of ascension. This is like, you know, domino effect of what happens with uh, heart recalibration. It's a very strong sensation for reunification with the presence. It all feels like it comes through the heart. That's your solar gateway, right? Crystalline, stargate of the heart. So if Solaris changes, and Gaia has changed, our hearts, of course, are going to be part of that trajectory, right? And you feel very different. The crystalline stargate of the heart, similar to Solaris becoming more crystalline and uh, bringing the etheric into the physical, there's a new radiance available as solar light. Mm. So we keep the heart clear as crystal, so that we may see the divine, not through the veil of distortion. And the immaculate concept is reignited. We've been working with this in the presence events, if you've done like some of those light conception uh, activations with me. Crystalline DNA, ion presence, the old drops away, the divine template is reactivated and of course this carries so much of that divine mother energy who is the key right to our ascension so suddenly that reigniting of that within the dna because again the dna knows your trajectory and everything that you have been so when the right frequency is broadcast through the heart in a coherent way you're able to express that through your dna and you'll feel it and you'll feel moments of complete bliss and freedom, trance-like a lot of the time, right? Just walking around like, what is happening to my consciousness right now? So expanded, everything is so vivid and beautiful. You're so in love with everything. <sighs> Hard to be around, I'm sure. Always. <laughs> Gosh, it's everything. Look at the lizard. Look at the light. Look at the tree. Look, oh, that's the most beautiful cherry plum tree I've ever seen. Yeah, it's just loving and communicating. You know, it's just, you're just connected. There's no more me and the tree. You know, it's, it's all flowing and beautiful. Hmm. So becoming star presence, here's how. Here's your house. Be a conduit of presence. The concept, Rumi, that which you are seeking is seeking you, becomes so clear during presence activations. It's not like, hmm. reunification in the past felt like, oh, I got fractals of my soul back, or I got, I remember my past lives and I'm all tidied up and everything. It's very different. It's very different. There's uh, the frequency of being a, an open crystalline conduit allows uh, not just information, it's not mental. It's a feeling state presence, but you're gonna feel like all of a sudden you, um, all of a sudden your true self 
is there. Not a separate consciousness, but it's like a big hello. You know, it just feel it through your whole field. My presence activation was happened during Sunday Unity meditations too, and it was happening to a lot of people at the same time and the same day during the same geomagnetic storm. And it was it was uh, so intensely beautiful, overwhelming compassion and grace and all the all the beautiful qualities that come with that. But the thing that struck me the most that it was a sensation of, there I am, I am. Like you, you felt source before, but all of a sudden, it was like there were no, there was no separation, no veils. It's quite beautiful, and then you get to to integrate. It's taken a couple of years to get this far, but uh, yeah, all of a sudden you're running into your true self, and the old self drops quickly, surprising speed of uh, kind of divorcing yourself from the illusion. We qualify our light emanations, feeling into a star presence, a star. What am I emanating? What am I creating? What are my intentions? All these choice points, like equinox being such a strong choice point right now for the division of realms and everything that's going on. Thought, feeling, action, words, very clear. We create conditions for the new experience. Pay attention to the change phase because you want to celebrate your flow into something new and not just... uh, celebrate achieving a new level. There's a real honoring of, I am transforming, and wow, I really felt that and everything. It's not uh, a more masculine, you know, goal-oriented, next level, check, 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 check. There's a a flow, a through line, right? That's a little bit more feminine. Again, mother plasma, you know, the trajectory, all the star emanations. Stillness and zero point, We have to listen, right? We have to listen to our inner star garden guidance as well as outer. Uh, This is how we channel or become conduits for star intelligence. A lot of meditation, a lot of stillness. For me, years in the wilderness, right? Just really tapping in, listening, feeling. And it's not a grasping, seeking, tell me more. It's a very... Uh, open-hearted conversation, exchange of light intelligence. You want to make sure that you give yourself a lot of nervous system support. That is your receptor for new light, keeping the nervous system, vagus nerve especially, open and pliable to the new light. It's going to be very important over the next couple of years to tune into that because the light level gets very intense people's nervous systems get stimulated. It's also hitting your brain. Some people are going to feel a little cray-cray, right? So we want to be balanced, able to hold that balanced light within our systems. Any kind of contraction or fear causes uh, rigidity, and then you won't be able to receive the new light if you're in that rigid state. So keep on the yoga. We are mingling strong forces in our bodies and heart. Rest fast, get in nature, self-care, decrees, meditation, hydration, dolphin, structured water. (laughs) All of those, you know, pay attention because the light level jumps, right? Another jump at equinox, another jump. It's not nice, easy going, up and down and everything. We're leaping, quantum leaping in these frequencies. Morning sun gazing, has something special for us right now. If you are a regular morning sun gazer, you will feel it. Not evening sun gazing, feels very different, right? Morning sun gazing, so much information. If you've made yourself, you know, becoming more receptive, if you've made yourself more receptive, you're gonna feel it. Become absorbent to the new rays, to the higher light. There's like a a liquid gold plasma again, crystalline mother plasma coming in, and she, she continues to use 
that gateway that happens with morning, uh, sunrise, you know, again, like when we did the gate work, the promise of something new, here's the brand new creation. Everything before this is gone, right? So we launch our days with that information and then becoming and amplifying the light, true star presence as a conduit of source. State it, decree it, reinforce that, you know, retrain your brain to uh, get some well-oiled pathways toward being that true star presence. Um, and, and some gatekeepers are even gonna return to solar service, expressing as star, right, collective service. So depending on your trajectory, if you're feeling that, if you have that communication, you know, that, that might be where you go next after we're, after we're done with Gaia, you know, feeling it. Light conception is this beautiful legacy process from the star ancients, that star beingness in form, pure mother template. Uh, we get the, the template kind of grounded for ascension. Again, light conception ha, uh, has nothing to do with birthing a child. It's about birthing new light. I had infinite numbers of infant and baby dreams before this equinox. It was kind of nonstop. I'm like, I get it already, right? The birthing new light. But we're going to go through a light conception uh, exercise tomorrow in Sunday's immersive so you can feel that that new light energy, that birthing of your presence, of your star presence, right into form. Uh, of course, not a physical birth, birthing the I am presence in form. <laughs>